dead, are you? And you call on such lost creatures to defend you. You have made me very desperate. We're not a team. We're a time bomb. Nothing we were ever trained for. Guys, I'm bringing the party to you. Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's movie review of The Avengers, starring. Robert Downey Jr., Gwyneth Paltrow, Mark Ruffalo, Scarlett Johansson, Chris Hemsworth, damn, how big is this cast? Chris Evans, Jeremy Renner, and Sam motherfucking Jackson. Quite frankly, watching The Avengers is like getting laid only a million times better. With that said, The Avengers gets a 10 out of 10. What? What, what do you mean? Really? What? Ah. Come on! Ugh. Serious? I seriously have to explain myself. God damn it. Okay, fine. <clears throat> After years of setup and so much hype, the Avengers finally hit the big screen, and it is only natural to question the merit and the quality of the movie given how many films tend to truly deliver despite their hype. It wouldn't be the first time that a film fell victim to the hype machine. Watchmen made itself out to look like some sort of masterpiece of epicness when it was only solid at best, and that's me being generous. Paranormal Activity had an amazing amount of hype, and the only thing this thing managed to do was scare the easily scared and put the rest of the people to sleep who saw it. And the king of hype, Avatar, played the biggest prank of all time, meeting none of its hype. Sorry ass clown, but I saw Dances with Wolves in 1992, and it was much better than its 2009 remake with a blue tint. Oh, and John Carter can suck it too. Anyways, with that out of the way, it's only natural to wonder and even expect the Avengers to fall like other films with hype, but shockingly enough, I can assure you all that the Avengers not only rose to the occasion, but blew it the hell away, and that's from a non-comic reading perspective. If you have a lot of love of the comics or follow the material, then you'll be telling yourself holy shit every few scenes, because that's how much the movie rocks. The Avengers tells the story of the team's formation and their efforts to thwart the takeover of Earth by Thor's brother, Loki, the god of mischief. Out of all the amazing feats seen in this film, the most personally impressive thing to me is the film's dedication, love, and respect to the source material as the film closely follows its comic book origins. Of course, there are modern twists added to this version of the story, but they are very minor and do not derail from its original source. The movie is also missing Wasp and Ant-Man, who were original members of the team, but knowing comic book lover and director Joss Whedon, we may just very well see them in the near future. Aside from that, everything that was present in the original run of the comics can't be found here, so it is literally a comic book fan sitting down watching the pages come to life on the silver screen. This is an impressive feat, rarely seen in films, and what's even more impressive is that Joss Whedon makes things and characters you thought couldn't work in the movie work. The first post credit is evidence of that. With a film of this grand size and cast, one would think that certain characters make it shafted for others, but once again the film swerves the other way and proves that it can indeed do what others thought it couldn't. Despite the number of Oscar winning actors and nominated cast members, no one person or character gets shafted for time. Everyone gets a respectable amount of screen time to shine, so no one ends up looking weak. Director Joss Whedon has shown an ability to juggle multiple characters correctly at the same time with his space western, Firefly, so it's only natural that his talents would transition over to the big screen with this film. From displays of humor, wit, drama, and explanation, every character in this film gets their own slice of the proverbial pie, so to speak, so that by the end we get a climax featuring fully fleshed out characters. What's even better is that the original cut of this film was 3 plus hours long with the extra time used to give more characters development. This is yet another sign that the team behind this film truly cared and that it was indeed a labor of love. 
I for one cannot wait to get the special edition of this in order to see what was cut from the original film. The writing also stands out with a great level of wit and interaction. Dialogue is sharp and smart, forcing the viewers to be on their mental toes. And it was also quite a treat looking for hidden messages and easter eggs in the film. This allows folks to see the movie and get a different experience with each time they view it. Try finding the Space Invaders reference for one example. Surprisingly, the film is also extremely funny for all the right reasons. Comedic timing is presented perfectly here, as the film knows when to pull the trigger and how long to wait most of the time. The jokes and humor are also done with subtle class as not to take away from anything else that might be going on in the film during a particular scene. The cast members also present their A-game and bring in strong and interesting performances to the point where no one person is technically weak. I also enjoyed the fact that cast members were allowed to do improv and write some of their own lines into the script. This is something often used and seen by Robert Downey Jr. in the film and it works stunningly well. From the dramatic and the humorous, each cast member interacted perfectly well with each other, but if I was to pick the one person who stole the show, it would have to be Mark Ruffalo and his portrayal of the Hulk. Yes, the newcomer was the one who was the most entertaining of the bunch. Before I continue, I must say that I side with many on the notion that I wanted to see Edward Norton continue the role as Bruce Banner. He is an excellent actor and had an immense love of the material and the character, but Ruffalo is just as strong. Let us not forget that Mark Ruffalo had Norton's blessings to take the role, and I personally trust the judgment of Edward Norton. That man knows film and knows what he is doing, and if he says that Mark Ruffalo can do it, then we should trust this man's taste and judgment because once again, he made the right call. Ruffalo's performance isn't the same in delivery as he plays a more calm and shy Bruce Banner, but the quality of his performance is just as strong as Norton's was, and Ruffalo has an extremely good sense of timing and execution of humor as he constantly made me laugh. He captures the intensity of the Hulk and nails humor down with excellence. Also, despite Marvel trying to forget Norton in the film, it was nice to see Whedon's reference of the 2008 Hulk movie and its events. It's always a nice treat seeing a film that doesn't assume that the audience is dumb. I was also very impressed with the Hulk's facial animation. He looks a bit like Mark Ruffalo. Some people may try to also argue that the Hulk should be a monster, since that's what he is. But I would counter that by asking everyone to remember that there is indeed a human inside the Hulk, and each person currently awake should have a representation of the other side, so to speak. I also enjoyed the homage to the character by having Lou Ferrigno voice the Hulk once again. Speaking of special effects and the use of CGI and practical effects, they were straight up amazing. I was shocked to see how clear and beautiful everything was. Usually when there is a giant fight of extreme chaos, the eye naturally loses focus. There's only so much we can keep track of so fast. This is a mistake often seen in big budget films like Transformers and its live action series. But with the Avengers, everything keeps a clear image constantly, so you know what's going on. Not just that, but the CGI and set pieces are visual orgasms. I mean writing, lighting, and pacing are also strong and never display weak points. And Colby Smothers from How I Met Your Mother fame does an excellent job portraying Maria Hill and even nails down the character's dislikable nature. Not bad for a newcomer to a film of this magnitude. Honestly, the only issue I could probably find in this film is that it tends to not carry a sense of dramatic weight, and even that wasn't much of a big deal. See, while we know that our main heroes usually never die, films often still retain dramatic weight because we don't know who else may get the axe, or what other likable character who isn't the main star may die. This dreadful sense of the unknown creates drama and suspense. A good example of dramatic weight is The Dark Knight. Yes, we know Batman isn't going to die, but everyone else is up for grabs, and you're always sitting there fearing for who may meet their demise. And The Dark Knight played with this literary tool extremely well. The Avengers doesn't in comparison or in general. This is a huge cast of characters acting as one unified protagonist, so we don't expect them to die, thus any attempt to create drama by putting a life hanging on the edge becomes a bit pointless because we know by default that they won't die. This would be a terrible factor if the movie wasn't so damn strong and impressive on every single other front. To boot, there is an emotional death in the film that will matter to fans and people following the films. 
so that softens the blow, so to speak. Even so, the issue of the film's dramatic weight shouldn't have much of a big impact on the viewers, as this is just nitpicking at best. Also, some may mention that Loki wasn't much of a villain because he couldn't stand toe to toe with other members of the Avengers, but I find this claim to be drowned in ignorance. Loki is not some fierce fighting force. Loki is the god of mischief, trickery, and deception. His strength is found in his ability to lie, mislead, and control through cunning deception. He isn't made to fight. He's made to control others to fight for him. His strength is found in his ability to lie, mislead, and control through cunning deception. He isn't made to fight. He is made to control others to fight for him. His threat is found in his sinister intent and careful planning and manipulation of others, which is why he was perfectly displayed in the film. With that said, if you haven't seen this movie already, I highly suggest you do, as you are denying yourself the best comic book film to date. And yes, I did just say that. The Avengers gets a marvelous 10 out of 10.